In this series, we're going to go through how you can use the new 3D system to perform common setups that are staples for working in comp. One of the driving goals of the new 3D system was to feel like home to artists, while offering a new platform to build and expand workflows. With this video, we want to showcase how all the workflows you're used to still apply with familiar node graph setups to the classic system. Let's start with a basic projection example. Here we've tracked the shot and can generate a point cloud from the data ready to align our geometry. At this point, I'm going to use the updated snapping menu to quickly snap my geometry into place and can refine as needed. Now I'm going to set up a projection using the track camera and will frame hold a single frame from which I want to project. With the frame held, I can perform any paint or cleanup tasks I wish. If we take a bigger example here of our desert that we want to project a texture across, we can see that a single camera projection isn't enough. So here we can use the merge layer shader and a single camera frame held in multiple parts of our scene to combine the projection results. This technique is great for covering large projection areas or for when you want to project higher details from when the camera is closer to an object but still retain a projection across the whole scene when the camera pulls farther back. As a quick aside, the time offset node and the frame hold node now have the ability to use fractional time. When working with projections, having the ability to set fractional time on these nodes allows us to fine tune the camera projections and finesse animated meshes, especially on the ones that are imported. This is a great tool to use whenever our projections or animation may not align perfectly. Another example we can go through is using UV projections to help clean up a part of our scene. In this instance, I'm using an example that's actually available on our Foundry Learn page, originally created by Austin Myers with the classic system. With the new 3D system, we can create the exact same steps with the new nodes and achieve the same result. So what we'll do first is we want to go ahead and track this. So we've got a camera tracker on here. We can see the tracking points. Now we'll select these points for the ground plane and I'm actually going to right click and do create a card. So that way it places the card for the ground plane. So next we'll go ahead and go to create a camera. So we would we already have a camera in place here, but we can just swap that out if we need to. So we'll plug our camera in for that. We have a card plugged in down here where it's going to go to the project 3D shader. We'll most likely have to kind of uh, uh, increase the width of the length of this card to include the entire path for it. So if we view through the scanline rendered node, it's currently set to UV unwrap, and that's what's going to allow us kind of flatten this out for us so we can do our paint work on it, and then we'll be able to project that onto the card. So if it wasn't on UV unwrap, it by default probably looks something like this, just the render camera, which we can't really work with. So that's why we want to set that to UV unwrap here. All right, so now we can go ahead and start our cleanup on this. Uh, just real quick work is some cloning. Just going to clone some of this uh, road texture as we've done there. Maybe clean it up, get some nice edges along there. I've been added in a gravel texture for this. So I found this gravel texture on Pexels. Went and tiled it a little bit, reduced it down in size, so that way we can give it some texture that might have been lost through the cloning here. And make sure we add on that frame hold for all the work that we've done on that particular frame. And we're going to put it back onto the card, that same exact card we had at the top. Put this back down at the bottom to make sure it's going right onto there. And everything's aligned with it. And then that card itself, and if we look through it, we can see our new patchwork or paintwork that's been done on it. And that's going to feed into uh, another scanline render node here. And that's basically just going to be a regular one with a rendered camera as the projection method here, just to show us what that's going to look like. And then now what we can do is just either use the background input on there or just merge this over the background, that patch. So we can see here. And there we go. Our cleanup of our little path is done. As you can see, the workflow matches exactly what we're used to in the classic system. Helping ensure Nuke 3D workflows and simplicity is retained while offering all new features and improvements of USD. 
A new workflow available is the ability to generate sticky projections. Here you can use the reference frame feature on the Geo UV project to select a projected frame that you want your texture to stick to your geometry at. Using a Geo UV project node allows us to bind multiple materials together and render them out of the Scanline Render 2 node to combine later in 2D for greater control. I can even use the new variables supported in Nuke's 3D system to easily switch between bindings for what I want rendered. Now we'll take a look at the GeoConstrain method as an alternative to using the GeoUV project method. So here we have a model with some textures on it. Now let's say we wanted to add a little embellishment on it, some decals, logos, whatever it might be. And rather than sending it back to the paint department to do that, uh, or even trying to do it here on the material files that these are connected to, so let's take a look at that imagine how difficult it might be if we had to find the right element say the engine here that we wanted to add a decal to and then with that we had to find the right map and if we find the right map it's going to look something like that and we'll have to try to paint or get the decal to conform on there some way well that's not what we want to do here we're going to try to make it a little bit easier on ourselves using what we have to work with so let's take a look at our model and we've added on some movement for it so if we take a look at the movement and really the idea behind this geo constraint is that you can project it onto a card or bind it to an axis or constrain it to an axis point and then have it follow the animation that already exists without doing too much extra work there. So we'll take a look at how we're going to do that then. So starting off, let's take a look at the projection setup that we're going to be using. Uh, so of course we have our camera and the camera is connected to a project 3D shader node. And then we have some textures on here. So maybe we want to combine checkerboard with this nuke let's get something like this here and then we can see that this projected the camera's a little bit rotated because i've already set it up ahead of time as far as aligning it and positioning it into the same orientation as the starting point of the engine but if we take a look at where it's currently at we can see it's quite far off from where the actual helicopter is even at the starting point for it so this camera and projection is in the default kind of position for it so what we want to do is make it or attach it or kind of put it on the side of the engine here. Now we can take our access node and within the access node, we have the ability to import the actual USD stage if we wanted to. But since it's already part of our comp, our main tree that we're working with here, I'm going to leave this import from file ticked off because it's actually reading in that scene data coming down pipe from the main USD stage that's right here, this one. So all that information is being passed through all this. We can pick it up through the access node here. And then within the access node now has our, our full information of our copter. We want to specify what particular part of this helicopter we want to have an access point attached to or reading from. So we can either go through the little scene graph pop-up menu here, scroll through if we happen to know what the name of it is, select it, great. Uh, if not, you know, it's always useful to open up the 3D workspace and then I can select that engine. It'll tell me what that engine, that main mesh is right here for that. And then I could even take it from here and drag and drop it right into that source prim. So really the idea behind this is just trying to specify which piece of this geo or mesh we want it to constrain to. And that's what we've done here. So now that we have that defined in the source prim up here, it inherits all the transformation information down here, rotation, whatever it might be attached along with it. And it gives us a good kind of like point now that we can constrain our camera to. So here's our access. Now you notice that the camera also has an access connection here that we connect that to. So as soon as I do that, we'll see that from this original point down here, way down there. Let's go ahead and make that connection now. Let's zoom out a little bit. And as I do that, I can connect this access point here and this one down here as well for the card. So it falls along with it. And then now, voila, we have the decal onto the engine there for us. Not only that, is because we're actually feeding in the movement uh, of this information coming down pipe that we've added right here for the transformation. So that's all getting fed into there as well. So it's going to follow the animation of this geometry now. So as I play through this, we'll see the helicopter should rotate and then decal sticks right with it. 
that goes out of sight of the camera, but on the other end of it, we also did another same setup process here, just adding onto this one. Project another logo onto it. If we take a look at that one, just like so. And this will continue the rotation. And then what's going to happen is it's going to kind of elevate and then this engine will rotate a little bit more. So again, I didn't have to animate any of this stuff. I'm just kind of picking up the information that already exists there and constraining the images to it. This method won't allow the projection to stick to deforming meshes like the Geo UV project node, but it gives you more options in your toolkit for how you can project in Nuke and stick projections where you need them to be.